Like when you are buried, dead, and gone, nobody's gonna be going back through these feeds to be like, man, that was a good argument. <laughs> It's dark as obsidian And it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun The salt of the earth Fire burning and water dripping How could we be using goddess of magic? She is timeless The pillow that doesn't need a plug She is the wildest woman and let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling about, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome, welcome back, welcome back, Wi Fi to the Wireless Woman. And we're about to do what we always do, which is not take over the world. It's called the roll. So I need all my trigger Twitter fingers and all my caps lock cappers, and that's not cap eyes, but cappers, to the front of the class to read aloud. Can you believe we are already a whole entire week into the new year? We have finished a full week of 2022. And I am so glad to be doing it with you. Welcome all of my viewers and subscribers. Make sure you go ahead and like this video on the way in and please feel free to comment and subscribe. And if you're really feeling the vibe, go ahead and share that link. Also go ahead on and follow your girl on my other social media platforms. You can find the links under the about tab on my YouTube channel page. I look forward to seeing you over there. It does get a little wild from time to time. Today's episode is a part of the Cult of Personality series, and it is concerned with rage harvesting. And I know a lot of people don't know what rage harvesting is, but don't worry, I'm gonna tell you. I decided to go ahead and extend the Cult of Personality episode into a series because I do really believe that we are dealing with cultural issues and it's kind of cult versus culture at this point. If, if culture isn't about free thinking and free expression, then at a certain point, we've got this follow the leader mentality that really isn't going to get us where we really want to go in the long run. So the Cult of Personality series is going to be primarily focused with asking those questions, cult versus culture, to really make sure that we're examining every aspect of the life that we're living to make sure that we're leaving the footprint that we want others to step into after us. I have been talking quite a bit about the spirit of the age, of this new age that we're in, and the spirit of the age is narcissism. And narcissism is all about dark forces being able to finally take credit for all of the psychological and emotional abuse and destruction and harm that they cause. The easiest thing to do is to label someone crazy. 
because it removes all responsibility for how they act and how they behave. But we're in a time where you really see a separation between the narcissistic and the empathic energy. And the problem is that both of these people are totally consumed with something and it's not allowing people to really get in tune and in touch with themselves. We live in a society that's keeping everyone busy. You have all this social media and all these ways for very narcissistic people to be able to be consumed with themselves and spreading their own image. And then you have very empathic people who are bound up in strongholds because they care about people. And more often than not, it's narcissistic people that are holding them in that bondage. So you've got the empath concerned about the narcissist, the narcissist busy concerned about themselves. And these gadgets don't really give you time to rest your mind, to really find peace and equilibrium. I heard the term, I'm not sure where, and then I started to look for more resources around it and there really weren't any. Rage harvesting occurs when a person will post something that we would call like a plant. They'll make some sort of polarizing statement or quote some fallacious statistic just to get people arguing over something that may not even be the truth of how that person feels. So now that person gets to pull the strings on both sides. The reason why that's a problem is because very narcissistic people are energy vampires. I mean, they really like harvest the souls of people. And the more time that they can get you consumed up in trivialities, the more they feed on your emotional energy. And the reason why this is so problematic is because that energy can be good or bad. They get just as much fulfillment out of negative energy and negative reinforcement as they do positive. So have you ever been in a relationship with someone and they made you feel like they didn't want you angry with them? You know, they would tell you, you needed to calm down. You needed to relax, but they were always kind of doing that thing that made you anxious or angry. And it seems like it's kind of training or grooming, but actually a narcissistic person gets the same dopamine release when you're angry with them as they do when you are happy and joyous with them. So if they're not capable of making you happy in a certain area, then they will antagonize you in that area because it's all about harvesting your energy. It's not about you being right or wrong, good or bad. Those extremes both garner the same type of energy for that person. You have to be careful to guard your heart and your energy. Because if you think about it, right, do you remember what it was like when you fell in love, how your heart raced, how you had those butterflies in your stomach, you just thought about that person all the time and replayed the times that you spent with them or little special moments? All right. Now think about the times when you're really, really upset, stressed out, and angry at a person. Your heart is racing. Your palms are sweating. You just want to get back to that person so you can get your side of the story out. You're, you're click, click, clicking away at that keyboard, sending text messages, calling back to back. You know, you feel sick on your stomach. I know from my own experience in a relationship with a very narcissistic person that even when you're on the outs on bad terms with that person, there's this dread, there's this draining feeling about having to go back in and talk to that person or try to work out an issue or a problem. So basically when you compare the physiological response to both of those extremes, you come up with basically the same chemical response to stimulus. Either one of those reactions is going to give you the same psychological effect. That's how the trauma bond works. Because in the trauma bond, this person makes you extremely happy, then they make you miserable. And just when you think you can't take any more misery, here comes a love bomb. For people who really just want to be loved and accepted and appreciated by everyone, for people who truly want to be the center of the discussion, the center of attention, anything will do. You know, anything that, anything that keeps them on your mind is worth the energy that they put into it. So how this applies to rage harvesting is you will have people 
who are so passive, they will put this suggestion out. It's almost like the Joker in the Dark Knight and to use their influence to stoke the fires of contention. How you'll know that it's rage harvesting more often than not, it'll just be posted. The person isn't going to make any statement about what they posted just in case their opinion on it might actually make people see them as a bad person or as a villain. They're just going to put it out like asking for a friend or here's a question. What do y'all think? And that's not to say that everyone who does that is looking for an argument. Some people just want a riveting, intelligent conversation about a matter, but you can tell by the quality of what they posted, whether they're looking for a debate or an argument. And you'll also notice that whenever you give maybe a succinct or a very well thought out answer, that person will continue to ask you questions that make it almost seem like what you said wasn't comprehensive or comprehensible. And all that person is trying to do is keep you engaged. These are literal crops of energy. You know, your time is important and it's precious. And the more of it that you're putting into trying to prove points to people or spending time trying to make your argument over something, it's time and energy that you're not spending on something else. And at the end of the day, these people come right in and harvest it like corn or wheat. And they get to feel important for that moment and for that time until the next episode, you know? So a big part of the mission of the wireless woman is being unplugged and being unbothered. And as I always say, my superpower is disengagement. Like we literally have social media apps now that measure your engagement. The amount of time that other people spend consumed and obsessing over you. Like when you break it down like that, you can understand why this is a feeding ground for narcissistic people who are looking to harvest the energy and souls of people. Like when you are buried, dead and gone, nobody's going to be going back through these feeds to be like, man, that was a good argument. And you will notice that the person that posts the post will remain throughout the comments ambivalent, unmoved, unchanged undeterred by every argument that you present. So rage harvesting is a real thing. It is something that um, people have come to do to rob you of your energy. I mean, I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. I mean, that's what they're trying to do. If you're with me and you're committed in 2022 to not giving off all this energy to all these crazy rage harvesters, then go ahead and drop that headphones emoji in the comments. Energy in this narcissistic society is currency. Like you literally get paid to keep people consumed with you and your image. So you have to be careful with it. You have to first examine yourself and the amount of attention you need to feel validated and important. And then you also have to take a look at these people whose platforms you spend the most time engaging in and whether or not this content and these programs are actually helping you to reach other goals that you have in your life. Otherwise, you need to unplug. People that spend the most time angry, that have that type of energy and that type of time, aren't doing anything constructive. They aren't building anything, you know, uh, it takes a certain amount of ego and narcissism within yourself to keep trying to prove your point over and over to people. And we're seeing it on a broad scale now. There are tons of people like the Manosphere and even the Womansphere and Kevin Samuels and red pill and just different groups of people um, whose whole platform is about drawing as many different people with different varying views. And these platforms could really be great 
if they were actually pushing an agenda that builds communities and makes them stronger. And I've heard people saying, you know, that these communities do that, but I just don't see the evidence of that, which is also a very narcissistic trait for somebody to say one thing, but actually be doing something else to be putting on a good show, but hiding their hands behind the scenes of all this. And if you have to put people down and assert yourself and disrespect other people in order to get your voice heard, that really undermines all the good that you say that you're doing. You see a lot of rage harvesters on the internet getting acclaim and getting fame for really just inciting emotional riots with people. So you just have to learn how to turn it off. You know, if these people were building things that were constructive, we would hear about it. We would hear about the schools that they're building. We would hear about the banks that they're starting, you know, especially within the black community. Our leadership used to be Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Fred Hampton and Huey P. Newton, people who really had a love for their community and everything that they received from their community was being given and funneled right back. So if your platform only makes you great, only brings people to come and follow you while you spread dust and division everywhere, you might be a rage harvester. It's just all about what your intention is. And if your intention is to respect the views and opinions of other people and to have a healthy debate that is focused and centered around the purpose of people gaining enlightenment, you know, becoming more empathetic because they have heard stories of other people that they can sympathize with. Well, then that's great. And that's what social media allows us to be able to do, come together and build these, these communities of like-minded people. And when I say like-minded, I don't mean we agree on everything. I mean that we have a common goal of coming to a better understanding of each other for the purpose of being a better, more enlightened society. You got to be cognizant and you can't be ignorant of the wiles of the enemy and the spirit of the age trying to reveal itself in these times because it's really about keeping you busy and distracted so that you're not really paying attention to what's good and best for you, what's good for your community, you know? And ultimately, when you look back over the TikToks of your life, this time that's spent on these platforms is really going to amount to having such little influence over your life. And you get a lot of blue light toxicity and health issues that are coming from the 5G on these cell towers. You know, it's deeper even than just that. But the one thing I can say that helps to build the immune system, that helps you to just have so much more fulfillment in life is guarding that energy. It's not spending your time dumping cortisol and adrenaline into your bloodstream because you're arguing with someone through your phone that you don't even know that does not care about you. They are the Lord of the harvest. <laughs> That's it. They're just there to see what heads of corn are ripe today. That's it. That's all they care about. You are just a number in a machine when it comes to engagement. And you don't want to be a bot. You want to be a person with all of the beautiful, unique, and intrinsic value that belongs to just you alone. But you cannot sell something for high price if you're discounting it on the clearance rack. So, thank you again for coming to hang out with me in room 303 as we continue on our journey to be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki. Until the next time, class is now. Oh, so deep.